hey good morning welcome back in um this is my weekly energy video we're talking about astrology welcome to my channel my name is grace and this is the intuitive lens so we're on the week of may 15th through the 21st if you've been following along the month of may has been presenting us with um very interesting um energy very interesting opportunities we are collectively at a crossroads here um, we've been discussing themes of security and freedom. We've been discussing uh, ways that we are surprising ourselves as well as, and this is maybe more so coming next week, um, we're going to talk about passion. Talk about passion. Although that is coming in this week. It's starting this week. We have the inciting incident. We'll get to that. Let's start at the top of the week. Uh, Monday, the Mercury retrograde ends, right? Yeah. Monday or is it Sunday? Anyway, it's not exact about the exact date, but it's happening at the same time that the moon is in Aries. So we may decide that we'd like to take some initiative. We'd like to put something out there because whatever sign the moon is in, it's where we draw our stability from. So if we feel especially um, influenced by the Mercury retrograde this time around that we're feeling a bit stuck, um, we may choose to utilize the energy in such a way to, you know, maybe send a message out we've been meaning to send. Or uh, because Mercury does rule the third house, it's the house of communications. That's why they say Mercury retrograde is in the oven. Oh my God, those memes, the Mercury retrograde memes are so funny. It rules communication. That's why they say when Mercury is retrograde, we experience all of these like, uh, weird uh, phenomenons with like messages not going through communication breakdowns things like that so anyway with the moon in Aries although we may still feel or experience the Mercury retrograde this week it may feel good to take some sort of initiative some sort of action uh, the next day Jupiter moves into Taurus this is a big deal Jupiter is a blessing it's uh, the planet of growth luck fortune and moving into Taurus, I feel like it is very abundant. We're talking about ways that we have, when it moves into Taurus, we're talking about how are we deciding to grow in beauty? How are we um, accepting and inviting abundance and growth into our life uh, before it's in Taurus it was in Aries um, where Jupiter is blessing so to speak taking initiative or being self-sufficient planting seeds so any seeds you have planted in the last several months in the last year you may start to see tangible results because Taurus is a earth sign. Um, it's a fixed sign. And it's ruled by Venus and the second house. The second house is everything that is material, value, worth. Venus is beauty, love, things like that. So think about how how you may start to notice Jupiter working in your own life in those areas, in those sectors. Um, and I have a question here that I wrote down. Where have you found ways to grow on your own, of your own volition? Now you may see or feel the rewards, financial or material. This week we want to ask ourselves, how are we experiencing abundance? How do we experience abundance? What is our relationship to that feeling? It's more than material. But it may manifest materially, and that's how we come to first experience it. It's how we can, I think, learn to feel abundance is when we have that physical experience. Uh, but it's a lot more than that. And... Look, the moon is in Taurus at the same time as we're now experiencing Jupiter square Pluto 
come midweek. Pluto's in Aquarius, remember? Jupiter is now in Taurus. If you're choosing old paradigms, you may get rerouted. We are still at the beginning of the astrological new year. We just exited eclipse season. We're being asked to assess how we experience abundance while we're in the midst of huge paradigm shifts on a collective level. This is a big deal because this is this may be a challenge for us to choose differently. How is materialism, I guess, in all of its good and bad forms, in all of its forms, how is materialism at work in your life? How is value at work in your life? Do you live by your values? Um, do you put a lot of value in material things? Is it, do you use it, um, I'll say, how are you utilizing your resources? I'm intentionally being very broad stroke here because I think that this can be applied in so many different ways. I think, um, I think I will do another tarot reading this week. I've se since separated my astrology readings and my tarot readings don't know if I'm okay with that decision. I'm open to changing my mind at any time. I'm just trying some new things here. Taurus is really ruling this week because we also have the new moon in Taurus right after Jupiter squaring Pluto. Ay ay ay. With Mercury sextile Saturn, this is good. This is a good thing. Because I think that if we can lean into what abundance means for us, what is prosperity for us? How do we want our lives to be blessed with prosperity? How can we welcome that in? This new moon in Taurus is helping us set those new intentions and any new moon is planting seeds yet again. As well as we may be thinking more clearly now um, and have this desire to learn as much as we can, possibly can. We're taking notes. Maybe we're observing how other people receive abundance and decide want to decide, We'd like to operate in a similar way. We'd like to uh, treat money and value similarly. Maybe we want to do away with old paradigms about value and money. And Pluto is an Aquarius. This is a very transformative energy for the collective and also power dynamics, power systems. Money is a massive power system. And I also believe that that placement and its influence on us, as well as some other things that are going on later this year, are calling us to be less about ourselves when we talk about value and abundance and more about all of us, which includes ourselves, right? We start with ourselves, but it is about everybody. It's about everybody doing well. And so in a world where we can witness um, not just like the, a lack mentality of abundance, but when we see people really truly struggling, when we see uh, people not getting what they deserve, um, we can choose to feel empowered to do something about that. We can all do something. We all have some value we all have some abundance that we can share. And so this is about collective, raising the collective tide of abundance, knowing that by some standards, we are lacking, as in areas where we can be doing better. And then I think that there's a brand new world out there in here among us where we have everything that we need and we can take care of each other. So let's wrap this up. Um, by the end of the week, we are entering Gemini season. Goodbye, Taurus. Thank you for all of these like one, two punch. Actually, it's like three or four punches of Taurus as we exit Taurus 
season, it's important. It's important. Sun enters Gemini. Now, to see how Gemini season overall impacts you, look at your chart. Look at where Leo is because um, Leo is ruled by the sun. Which house that is in and read about that house. Um, I'm a bad example maybe because Leo doesn't actually rule any of my houses. It is intercepted. I have to study more about what that means. If you know what it means, please feel free to help me out with your abundance of knowledge if you want to bestow that upon me. Intercepted signs in the house, what does that mean? Um, Leo is coming... Leo is accented. Leo is our expression, our playfulness, our livelihood. It is our energy, our life force energy. So sun is in Gemini. Communication is enhanced. Our excitement, our passion is enhanced. Also, Mars moves into Leo and Mars is opposite Pluto. This is the inciting incident. I think that this is an explosion of energy. This is um, feeling passionate. This is um, sensual. This is sensitive egos as well. It's best to keep it light this coming weekend and just see where your energy is going. Where does your energy want to be moved into? I think it's safe to explore that. Just be very aware of possible energy of aggression or domination. We don't want to be using our aggression out on other people. We don't want to be dominating other people. The, you know what came up for me when I was doing these notes? was like, what would you do for a Klondike bar? It's very fun, very playful, you know, like that. But in other ways, like, what are you willing to do to get what you want? which is the question I actually wrote, that question doesn't feel the same as what would you do for a Klondike bar? This is so random. I'm just saying like, watch out for that line of, at some point we are all willing to work very hard for the things that we value. You see, it's coming back. How we communicate that which we want, how we, um, express ourselves outwardly to get what we want matters. It matters that we're communicating. It matters that we're letting people know I'm moving in this direction. Are you coming with me? Do you want to stay over there? Are you coming in? <laughs> uh, like, you know, going with your roommate to the store to pick up a few things or, you know, going with your friend to the store to pick up a few things. And you decide to stay in the car. No, I'm good. Um, and but also, by the end of the week, um, well, before I move on, I do want to say, like, you know, something beneficial to do here. Um, if you're feeling like you need to move some energy around, do look for some physical outlets or creative outlets. Um, that's also very Leo energy. So learn to utilize that Leo. Learn to utilize that fire energy, Mars and Leo are uh, brought under, are, are highlighted at the end of the week, yeah. As well as with Mercury ending its retrograde at the beginning of the week, by the end of the week, there may be an opportunity to look over um, something, to look over things requiring more mental capacity. Um, so definitely spend some time revisiting things that maybe were left unfinished or just anything requiring mental energy. So contracts, um, deals, this is about, this is the, there is an energy of learning and Gemini is really, really good for learning and absorbing information. Yep. And it's a Gemini moon weekend before it moves into Cancer the nurturing sign of cancer. And you'll see next week, there is going to be a lot of cancer. Okay, that's it. That's all I have for now. I'm gonna save the rest for later. Thanks so much for being here. Please like, share, subscribe. I appreciate all of your beautiful energy.
thank you so much and see you next time